Welcome back, Jags. I'm Annika Vasquez. On today's episode, we get an update on Jag Sports, we have information on homecoming, and check out the campus's newest club. This is Jag TV. The new crochet club on campus is getting people hooked on a new skill. Here's Riley with the new story. When juniors Marley and Gabby came up with their new business model, they brought an old art back into the spotlight. Crocheting. Our crochet business is called Cosmic Crochet on Instagram. Um, we started it because we thought it'd be fun and we just wanted to do a cute little project. Because it's something I can do with my good friend here and <laughs> it's something that I've been doing for a long time and I would like to stick to and so it's just important to me because it brings me closer to people. And they aren't the only ones who are finding community in this hobby. Not just for experienced crocheters, the campus now hosts a crochet club that hopes to get more students hooked on this craft. Started by art teachers Dominique Flores and Christine Dallahan, Crochet Club has already gained a large following of both beginners and seasoned crocheters. Even if you are a little bit nervous about uh, learning how to make things, it's a great skill to have. Just in case, or you know, if you want to bond with other people, everyone's really super friendly and they're always helping to teach each other. Um, at the club we had students teaching students and it was we had teachers teaching teachers. The club has become a place for both students and teachers to crochet together with the space, company, and materials provided by the club and take advantage of the stress relief the craft provides. I think crochet club is important to me because I feel like growing a community of people who are beginners to crocheting or already have crocheted it's just Yes. Nice, warm, and welcoming, and also this club is more for like people who just need a stress relief for this club. It's not really more of like a, you need to put this on your college resumes and all of this stuff. It's more just like a, you can just come here, chill, learn a new hobby, and hopefully you can carry this on as well. And while crocheting might be something your great grandma did, thanks to social media accounts on Instagram and TikTok, it's popular all over again. I think my favorite part of the club is just having a community that also crochets and also I can teach people how to crochet. I think it's really fun that I get to meet new people and hopefully spread my new found favorite hobby with everyone else around me. And after years of crochet, socks and sweaters being the norm, new crocheters are making stuffed animals and cute car charms. Or even outfits for a ceramic goose. Um, I love to crochet. It is relaxing to me and entertaining um, and you get to make cute sweaters for your classroom goose. This is one of the first bags I made. It's just um, a blue background and a pink bottom with some yellow flowers on it. Um, it's not on our shop but it is just one of the first things I had made. I love making things for people. I love making um, like bags or hats or clothes or stuffed animals, anything. I feel very proud to wear something that I have made or have something that I've made and people compliment it and I'm like, thank you, I made it myself. Yeah. Crocheting has made its mark on campus and has inspired so many to pick up a new hobby and learn to never be afraid to stitch up something new. For JAG TV, this is Riley Shosh. If you're yawning for more, the next meeting will be in the library and PR room. For more information, follow the Instagram at ctj.crochetclub. Teachers and students are using AI in the classroom now, relying on it to help in appropriate ways. Laura has more from both teachers and students on campus. Instead of being afraid of AI, both students and teachers are finding appropriate ways to use this technology in classrooms. So there's a lot of websites that allow AI teachers to use AI um, to lesson plan and then hopefully one day we'll actually be able to let students use AI for assignments for generating ideas and stuff like that but for teachers it can do graphic organizers it can make images it can give us more ideas on how to present a topic there's a lot of things that AI can do to help us interact more with our students According to Sanchez, AI is best for taking care of basic tasks, 
which allows you more time to engage with students. So I love being hands-on with my kids, but if I spend a whole lot of time outside of class trying to make assignments, trying to do stuff, then I don't get to interact with my kids as much when I'm in the classroom. So because AI makes stuff easier to do for me or quicker, then I can focus on speaking with my students and interacting with them more. So it allows me to be closer with my kids. And students are finding that AI can help with test prep. Well, when I was in A-Push and I didn't understand something in a textbook, um, I could ask AI to explain it for me. There's also really good resources that have AI embedded into them like Note and Quizlet so you can make your own flashcards because it's a very time consuming thing to do. Um, like as long as you follow the policies of academic integrity and it's going to help you out. And of course, students need to understand that while AI can be useful in some ways, they still need to avoid relying on it entirely. I try to like type at a prompt and it's just giving me like this like obviously AI generated like text where it's just like it's such big words that like no regular high schooler would ever use. So um, yeah, there's definitely like, um, you could definitely tell the difference between like AI and then like an actual person, so yeah. With math and science concepts, I feel like it doesn't completely grasp it yet. So it's better to look for help in like with your teachers or other peers. Currently, NEISD is updating the district's academic integrity policy to include AI. So I'm really looking forward to having students use it in different ways in the classroom because I think that's going to be really cool and I also think that's the future. Like y'all are going to have to use that in your professional careers. So if we get to do that now, you'll have more experience with it when y'all go to college or y'all find your professions. With sites like Google and even Amazon boasting their own AI tools, everyone needs to get on board and figure out how to tame this technology. I think learning, I think AI can be implemented in so many different things that we don't even know yet. Like I feel like with AI there's so many different possibilities that haven't been discovered yet or haven't really been like, you know, released to like the mass like public yet. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely in the future I feel like it's going to be like a staple for just like basic technology. For Jack TV, this is Laura Andrade. And here's the Reyes Brothers with Jack Sports. What's up Jags? Welcome back to Jack Sports. This week we bring you action from the pool to the field. This, this is, is Jack, Jack Sports. Sports. For the first time this year, we check in with water polo. Last week, the boys lost 6-16 and the girls went 16-8 against Churchill. They faced off against the Rattlers on Tuesday at the Josh Davis Natatorium. Let's go to the course and check in with tennis. They went up against Churchill last Wednesday and they face off with the Clark Cougars today at Blossom. Last weekend, cross country competed at the McNeil Meet with Michael Repper setting a new PR. This weekend, our runners on the cross country team will be competing at the Round Rock Meet near Austin. On Tuesday, the volleyball team went up against district opponent Madison. Our girls play the volunteers tomorrow at Johnson at 6.45 p.m. The Jags traveled to Alice and dominated the Mustangs 49-21. Coming off a of bye week, the Jags are looking to do the same to the Broncos on Saturday night when they face Brandeis at Ferris Stadium at 7 p.m. That's all for this week, Jags. See you next time with more, more Jag, Jag action. action. And here come next week. I checked in with Student Council to find out more about this big event. As October approaches, so does the annual tradition of homecoming. This year we talked to Stuco members to find out some changes, fun facts, and tips for the big day. Um, this year we decided to move it back farther in October because in the previous years it's been in September and it didn't give us enough time to set up, so it gives us more time to like set up decorations and everything. This day change also played a role in the theme of this special night and the days leading up to it. Leading up to homecoming, there will be dress up days every day of the week. Right now, I think we have neon, camo, we'll probably have country, and then class color day, of course. Um, so it's just really fun to be able to kind of get hyped up before the actual dance. And then that Friday before, on October 4th, we have our homecoming game, which is really fun because everyone kind of dresses the theme and hopefully we win. And then we have homecoming on the 4th and the 5th. So yeah. Like any tradition, there are things that never change. Homecoming is no different. So the ticket includes getting into the dance and also one of the shirts that you can buy. 
Um, it also includes the DJ when you're there, the band, and the experience, but you have to pay extra if you want you know, concessions or kind of ice or stuff like that. And as music lovers know, tickets are a must for any festival or show. Tickets can be bought starting this week, so September 16th, until the date of homecoming, October 5th. So every single week it'll be a $5 increase, so this week it's $25, then $30, $35, and then at the door you can buy them cash only for $40. In the check check. Yes. Day of, make sure to bring some friends and dress in your most colorful and outgoing wardrobe to be ready for the spotlight. If you have any questions, make sure to ask any Stuco member. And don't forget to bring your ID and ticket if you're attending the dance. This Tuesday, band had their fall festival where they presented their unique theme for competition season. The theme of our program, uh, our program is called Jade. Uh, and it has to do with Jade the stone, Jade the color. Uh, and we have many different colors that come out through the show and different sort of personalities. Fall Festival invites all NAISD bands to perform for fans and gives all bands a chance to fully stage their contest shows. Uh, and so some of the specific things I look for in improvement from rehearsal to rehearsal are, can I hear all of the parts? Um, does the music sound beautiful? Does it sound transparent? Does it sound more beautiful than it did yesterday? Um, are, are the parts in balance? Is anybody sticking out? Uh, is anybody backing off too much? Uh, so my kind of purview mostly is just listening to the music uh, and determining, you know, does the music live up to my expectations and my standards. And of course, each show features new costumes that coordinate with the overall theme. So this performance, we're going to be wearing our CTJ Classic uniform. Uh, so that'll be uh, the our, our kind of school colors. Uh, uniform that we wear, we'll be wearing our plumes. Uh, it is not the same uniform that we're going to be wearing in BOA San Antonio, for example, at the end of the season. Uh, those uniforms are still coming in, uh, but those uniforms will kind of more encapsulate what the theme to the show is. The band will travel to San Marcos this weekend for their first contest of the season. For JAG TV, this is Mickey Hutchings. And if you're looking for something else to do on the weekend, Elijah checked out a local mini golf place with a twist. In an unassuming strip mall is a local business that's added a twist on the mini golf experience. Located on Bitters near Blossom Athletic Center, Cosmic Mayhem is a full 18 hole course that glows in the dark by black light. Even the balls glow. For $12.99 a person, you can play the course that's heavy on the sci-fi and space theme. And when you're done on the course, if you're 18, you can try your hand at axe throwing. This facility has 30 state-of-the-art lanes with different levels and challenges. You can get one per hour for $24.99 a person. This place also hosts a retro arcade, carnival games, and billiards, complete with a prize counter if you do well. Again, just a few blocks down from Blossom, Cosmic Mayhem Mini Golf is a local spot for the weekend. For Jag TV, this is Elijah Cruz. And here's something fun from our crew. Look at this place I found here in San Antonio, Texas, valued at 24 cents. This place is biggish. Here we got an open driveway. So big, you can technically fit a bus here, but look at all these cars. That's very convenient. And they got maximum security. I can't even open this door. And this place has a wide open interior. Like, look at all the space you have. Not one, not two, but three floors. Hot. Run around to school for what? I don't even like this school. You can't say that, bro. You, have, you, you, can't, you can't say that. Down at F1 for our female audience, we have our fashion class. Right across the hall for our wannabe Gordon Ramses, we have our cooking classes. And this estate comes with a free art piece. It's a cat with spots. And here in the E-Wing on the second floor, we have our business classes. And as you can see, I'm always dressed for business. Yo, this library biggish. Yo, this band hall biggish. Skinny doorway. This auditorium is biggish. Dining air, biggest. Oh yeah, here's the in-home office space. Again, biggest. Just know I was completely safe and willing with this. But it's a perfect place for a basketball hoop. Boom on your head! Look at that! Wide variety kitchen. Come on, man. Munch it all day. This <gasps> school also comes with Lincoln Mickelson. What in the world? Big Pookie. Yeah. School tour. That was the Johnson Home Tour. Thank y'all so much for watching. See y'all later. 
For more updates before our next show, be sure to follow us on Instagram at DAG Student Media or on our YouTube at DAG TV. That's all for this week. See you next time, DAGs.